All right, well, good morning. Um, I'm not sure I'm not the only one where we walk into, I don't know, uh, a friend's house, family's house, in the park, and you see a dog, and you kind of just stop, and everything goes straight to the dog. I mean, not trying to be biased, but I do love dogs. And not only do I love dogs, because they're cute, but um, I like that they have so much knowledge, that they're, like, they have the ability to learn, and, like, be smart, and learn different ways, and be trained certain ways. And specifically, um, canine dogs, the police canine dogs, um, I think are really interesting because they're trained to do essentially what they, what they're um, supposed to be like retriever, as in those dogs retrieve, and German shepherds, as in they um, <coughs> herd um, things. And, and some examples of the p most popular canines is this, is a um, Belgian Malavoy. Um, that dog. Last button on the bottom. You didn't unplug anything, did you? No, I didn't. Well, you keep pushing the laser pointer button. That's not it. Oh. surprised to find that this was a canine because it doesn't really look like a canine, it just kind of looks, I don't know, like a big dog that doesn't really have too much um, to say or do, but they actually are really good for smell, <coughs> like so they um, can smell something and go find it for the officers. And these are the Dutch Shepherds, and then Retrievers, which is also um, a dog for smell. And um, this is Pero. Yes, I'm pronouncing it correctly, P-E-R-R-O. And clever name I know, it means dog in Spanish. Um, this, Pero, uh, my, my father's in law enforcement and he works for the Crime Suppression Unit, which is pretty much like with gangs and narcotics. So he works a lot with canines. And this dog, Pero, he's retired now. But he um, he was a really nice, well, he is really a really nice dog. And he can sometimes be in my living room or my backyard and I'd be really confused, but. For the most part, he's a, he was a really good dog, not too scary, and um, so yeah. And then, uh, so today I'm going to be introducing uh, the way that canines uh, detect things, and what they detect, and the safer environment they provide, and how they um, provide search and rescue. So today I want to describe for you the important roles of police canines. So let's take a um, closer look at the specific duties they perform. So they are great detectors for um, fugitives and bodies and narcotics. And Katie Finley says that dogs have two, 255 million uh, receptors in their noses compared to humans who have five million and they are used for this advantage. So like essentially these dogs are able to find so much more of like the narcotics than what a human can find because that's a lot more of a difference. And dogs are used to detect these illegal substances or detect explosions and it's either one or the other. So, um, so essentially like when the dog is gonna go find a, a scent or a smell, don't worry this is clean, their scent that they're supposed to smell is put in here so the dog is, smells it and then they go try to detect it because they're not trained to find more than one thing at one time. It's one, like one goal, then one outcome. Now let's take a look at how they help the officers. Um, when I was talking to Pero's owner, he said that his most, what Pero was used the most for was um, when they had to go in, for example, like people's yards or some houses where they have like a bunch of cars and trash and tarps and things, and that's not always a way that officers can, you know, go look and see everywhere, but as a canine dog, they're able to look everywhere at one time and smell and use all their different senses to find what they are supposed to find. And um, Katie Finley also says that four 
For hundreds of years, herding breeds have been uh, bred to have the physical strength and intelligence needed to work with others' livestock. So they're basically, from you know, 100 years ago, they were able to herd animals and help their owners like with their livestock. So now, essentially with them being canines, they're able to do the same kind of duties, but for canine work. And now, um, let's take a look at how important they are to the community. So, another big thing that dogs are used for is for search and rescue. So, in natural disasters or fugitive, finding fugitives, um, they're used a lot to find those and a lot to find human remains if, you know, if there's a story of there's someone going on a hike and their body, they're a missing person, um, the dog will go out sniff their jacket or something that smells like them and then go find them like over hundreds and hundreds of miles um, and some of the really um, smarter dogs that have had really intense training training can even uh, detect water um, through the water like smell through the water which I think is pretty cool and the main thing that canines um, do is people always say like oh like your dogs like your best friend well these dogs um, live with their handlers as they're they're pretty much like a part of the family and they go everywhere everywhere with them and all uh, police dogs speak a language like a language that's not zoned for this area for example parallels in Fountain Valley and the main languages that are spoken in Fountain Valley are English Spanish and Vietnamese so he's not gonna speak Vietnamese because then people the owner trying to talk to the dog in Vietnamese the dog's gonna know, or the, per, the fugitive to hear them and understand what they're saying. Pero speaks, or understands Austrian, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, and Lieutenant Watson says his favorite thing about being a canine handler is that his mission takes makes a difference every single day of work, so that he's not the only one being recognized for his work. He, um, his dog is also too, and that's kind of a cool little like mascot to have. And he also says that his partnership with his dog Frisco had truly given him his best friend. He spent more time with him than anyone else in his entire life. They work together, live together, and go on vacation together. Um, and to show it's kind of big, but I thought it was pretty cool. This is the canine um, uh, bulletproof vest. And fun fact, this is not knife proof, but it's bulletproof which I did not know that until I did research on this. Um, and so they wear this all the time when they're in the car, not when they're at home and everything, but only when they're um, essentially on duty. And, oh, this is their toy that they use and they don't, they aren't able, um, usually when dogs are trained, they, they get like food or a treat, like if you tell your dog to sit, your dog's gonna, you know, get a treat after or something. They get this toy, which is basically kind of, kind of feels like a rope, so they get to bite down on it. And this is like their pride and joy. It's clean, don't worry. So I thought that was pretty interesting that they're not like bribed with food. So in conclusion, um, these dogs are very effective to our community and everyday life, and I believe that they help the officers a lot. And I think everyone should take a look if they have dogs at home. Take a look at what knowledge that they have. And even just from being little backyard guard dogs, see how smart they really are. Thank you. Yes, hang on a second. Uh, evaluation rubric goes on top, put it in the pile there. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> all right, Nicole's going to do the oral evaluation. That's fine. Um, I thought you had really good background info before you gave your thesis statement, and it was very well structured and organized. Um, I thought it was you did a good job on giving data and, like, other than just like stating facts, it's very like smooth. Um, it could be a little more smoother, but um, 
I liked your conclusion as well. So overall, it's very nice. Yeah, I'm always uncomfortable when people stand oh, during the things because it makes it feel like you're a target instead of we're collaborating on this process. So, sorry about that. Um, the greeting is okay. I, you've got nice uh, visual images that you're starting with to kind of get our attention. You needed to figure out the issue a little bit uh, with the remote, but that was not a big deal. But it does go three minutes before you actually get to your purpose statement, and I thought that, that was problematic. Um, the functions of the animals, I thought at first, were going to be the uh, way that the speech was organized and structured, but as it goes on, I thought that that was less clear that that's how things were working, and it, sometimes material was integrated into a spot where I wasn't quite sure why we were getting it in that particular spot, except that you seemed to remember that that was something that you wanted to mention. So I thought organizationally it was a little bit problematic in the body of the speech, although it wasn't hard to follow. Uh, there are transitions in a couple of spots that are a little uh, obvious, but uh, at least they're clear. I did appreciate the citation of information in the presentation. There are several places where you are quoting people who are knowledgeable about uh, these animals and about the way they're using and being used, and those, you also had some first-hand experience that you got an opportunity to include in the presentation. I like that. The visual materials, the, most of the pictures of the dogs are very interesting. I think people like dogs for the most part. Um, I have no idea what that first object was that you showed us and how it works, and it just kind of showed up and then disappeared. That seemed a little bit strange to me. The uh, vest that the dog wears, that was uh, also interesting. I thought that you, you know, people are kind of interested in the equipment and the actual objects even more than the pictures, which makes sense. Um, but like I said, it seems like those things are randomly introduced into the subject and they need to be integrated more effectively. Uh, you do an okay job speaking up and uh, there's good variety in your voice. You do have a tendency, however, to look down while you're speaking and that's a little bit awkward. So you want to be careful about that. All right, I'm trying to keep these things short because I'm going to start coughing otherwise.